Hi, I'm Ollie. I'm an Obtainium engineer and jack of all trades. And I'm here working on Electro Bird, the conversion of the 1968 Toyota Stout to sell a dairy to electric. So it's day seven, and I'm feeling like there's a lot ahead. Starting to uh, start to have some questions myself whether we're going to make it. But still got time. Still got time. The oil seals uh, that got sent were the wrong size. More seals are on the way today. Yeah, so the tail shaft out of the spares truck is going in. The unis in that aren't too bad. Got a new center bearing there uh, to go on because the one that was on it was cactus. And I reckon we can probably bolt the adapter plate onto the gearbox. Hopefully all the bolts go in okay. Um, yeah. Oh, hey Patty, how you doing? Don't know if you've met Patty yet. I'm gonna drink my cuppa. You are so full of rabbit. Tess got him a rabbit, a roadkill rabbit on the way home and uh, yesterday, and so he's been eating his way through that. He's very full. I'm only giving him a bit at a time, but he's a lucky lad. Hey Patty Chomsky. Let's get uh, that tail shaft back together and get the adapter plate bolted on. Get into day seven. This is the intermediate flange on the tail shaft. It's the one that we had to use the puller and the heat and the drift and hammer. It didn't seem that rusty and we cleaned it up a bit and it was still quite hard to get back on. So it wasn't sliding on and off that spline easily. I did try to clean it up as much as I could. Toyota manual specifies 20 kilogram meters. Here it goes, this is a lot. Check that once more. Yep, we're done. Okay, we're gonna back that off now. Try to back that off. Okay, and adjust to four. We'll pop up on the screen uh, for you the, the specs. Okay, and to four. And now I'm gonna check the castellation, and it's almost lined up just a smidgen more. Need to get a new split pin. Right on. Let's do that. Let's grab a split pin. I'm pretty confident this is reasonably flat now. There was a high point here of just filed that down and then realized it's the thinnest part and I could just uh, forge it down slightly. Now, so it's about time to fit this up I think. Do you believe it? It actually went on. Can't believe all those holes lined up with that uh, crap technique that I did for getting the holes templated, but uh, it's on. It's really nice. Let's try and get the uh, motor lined up now. Sam mentioned the other night, is this balanced? Uh, that's a really good point. Probably being a bit slack, not balancing it. I don't have a good method for balancing it. All this is pretty symmetrical, but I thought I would feel for vibration. Now this is only 12 volts, so it's gonna be uh, one quarter of full RPM. Uh, I'll show you what's going on. I'm definitely getting less 
vibration down here than up here. I'm getting a, oh, a little bit. I can't see any vibration or feel any vibration, but uh, yeah, just touching that to your ear and you can kind of hear where the vibration is, like on an engine or something. Obviously in this case, it's not a bearing or something, it's a wobble, so uh, I thought this would be the most uh, exaggerated place where that would occur. But it doesn't feel too bad to me, but I definitely can hear a little bit of, a little bit of a harmonic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would like to be able to balance this better. So if you've got a good, simple method for balancing, uh, please let me know in the comments. Yeah, I think, I think it's probably good enough. This is probably, this is the slack bit, I guess. I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> gonna put it in. There it is, all bolted up. Really happy with that. Turns without rubbing on anything. It's all, all the bolts are tapped, so don't have to uh, hold nuts on the back when you're undoing it. Cool. I think we get on to the next step. Not quite sure what that is yet, but uh, we'll move on to the next step. I reckon lunch is the next step. Lucky I cleaned it under here. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a good job, wasn't it? Anyway, I'm going to pull all the brakes out because they're leaking and this is a great opportunity to get them all sorted. Guess that's a bit of a delay on the EV side of things, but uh, needs to be done, so let's get it done. Let's get the diff out too. Do the lash on the diff. It's a bit, uh, a bit sloppy. The oil seal on the diff's leaking, so got spare seals on hand. We'll uh, service this back end. The whole drive line's gonna be fresh as a daisy by the time we're done. like the original cork seal is still intact which is really nice don't have to redo a seal on there it's a semi floating axle and there's little C clips on the end so I've got to get those C clips out uh, and then I can take the axles out and then the diff can come out and I know how much I don't know about diffs but this is a farm one and I might as well give it a go yeah I'm sure there's people with a huge amount more experience than me I can feel that the lash is far too much and I know it's pretty complicated. It's not just a case of tightening up the lash, it depends on the contact pattern and a whole lot of things, but we're gonna give it a go. Here goes. And the actual lash from the pinion to the crown wheel isn't as bad as I thought it was, but this front oil seal was leaking 
I can see on there it's a 3874 something. The width doesn't really matter too much. The question is, do I have a diff seal that's 3874? Uh, just down here, here we go, here are the, here are the seals. And they're axles. There we go, 3874. They're the ones we need. Oh yeah, and we're gonna need these too because the axles, the axle seals are bad. Anyway, they were leaking all over the brakes, and might as well show you while we're at it. Uh, the brakes are, are terrible. They were so covered, uh, probably diff oil, um, and one of the pads is coming off the shoe. So, gonna need to get some new ones of those as well. I think I've got something in stock. Now, who knows whether my uh, seal removal tool is going to fit. There we go. Gotcha. 